uh, Taylor Schilling, congratulations on your first Emmy nomination for Orange is the New Black. Uh, we have got 12 nominations overall in, in addition you know, to your, to your uh, nomination for Best Comedy Actress. Were you surprised by how much support the show got? Um, no, it's so exciting. Are we really doing it right now? Are we mm -hmm. talking? We're having, yeah. the, we're having the hangout as we speak? Absolutely. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, you know, the show has been so special to me and um, I really felt while we were making it that we were making something kind of special and um, I so uh, love the character of Piper and I really love the people that I work with that there, there was a, there was a, I had such an extraordinary response to it that it's not totally surprising to me that, um, you know, other people have enjoyed it so much. But it, I don't know if you can ever anticipate this. I mean, 12 is a lot of nominations. I mean, just saying. Uh, and the show's had a, an impact on the awards scene, uh, you know, for the whole last you know year, uh, going back to the Golden Globes earlier this year. Uh, were you anticipating the Emmy announcement, or, or did you not realize they were coming up? Is that something that was on your mind? Um, you know, I I'm actually pretty good at compartmentalizing until the last minute. I wasn't really focusing on it, but the day the day before, I started to feel a little bit like. I wonder what will happen. I mean, the thing the thing is that things just feel so this feels like such a such an honor all around that I mean, what what is the prize is being able to do my job. You know what I mean? But that is really that's what feels like so exciting and I I still can't really get over the fact that I can that I'm able to make a living doing what I love. So, I mean, it, it always feels, it definitely feels like icing on the cake. The night before I was starting to get a little bit like, ooh, I hope the show, I hope I hope we do okay. Uh, going back to that uh, Golden Globe nomination, what, what was that experience like? I mean, you always hear that that's a, you know, a crazy, you know, entertaining party, if nothing else. You know, was that your first time at those awards? Um, yeah, 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 yeah. No, it was, it, and it, it was, um, it was it, it was amazing. I mean, it was an amazing. It's so. I mean, I just felt so honored. I felt so honored. It it meant so much to me to be seen in that way. There's like, it really is about the work and feeling sort of plugged in and creative in my work. And there is it just feels really nice to be recognized and the, and and I really was experiencing that at the globes um, but also it just was so incredible to be in the same room with all those people that I look up to so much I mean I could I could almost throw my napkin and hit Meryl Streep <laughs> well, really, I would never throw anything at Meryl Streep <laughs> Nothing. Plus to all the movie people, I mean, I hear always, you know, how, how the, you know, the lowly TV folks are, are segregated in, in the back of the room. Yeah, I guess that was actually truly happening. <laughs> actually, I think that actually did happen. Well, we were like on a ring. We were like, we were like protecting all the movie people that were in the middle of the room. And all the TV people were sort of like on a nice, we created a nice barrier around the television, around the movie people. Uh, you, know, you were the only nomination for the show at the Golden Globe, so it must be nice to, now at the Emmys, to be able to share the spotlight with so many of the cast and crew and producers. You know, uh, five actors were nominated for the show uh, you know, yeah. overall. Well, what's that like? Um, I think the, I, it just seems like it, it, it couldn't be a better situation because what this show is really the sum of its parts. And... Um, there, it's it's impossible to pull out one thread from the beginning down. I mean, Genji Cohan, who's writing this, and her is really, really a visionary. I think right now in terms of what she's added to the um, popular culture landscape, what she's had the courage to add to it. Um, so starting from her down to every single writer and every single actor on this show, there, um, it the. The piece is braided together. Um, it, it it wouldn't work without every single person. So um, I think it's really important that so many different aspects of the show have been recognized, and it and it feels it feels it feels appropriate.
Uh, one of the, those other nominees for the show is uh, Jodie Foster for directing the episode Lesbian Request Denied. Uh, she's, of course, you know, you know, legendary actress and, and director. And, and, you know, as an actor, is it different working with directors who have so much experience in front of the camera as well? Also, you know, Andrew McCarthy has directed episodes of the show. Yeah, I think that it... Um... I think that it does make a difference. I think that you can feel, or I can feel, when someone has been in my shoes and there's a level of empathy sort of with your experience, where you are, where, you know, and, and maybe, maybe, you know, certainly with Andrew and Jody, there's a, there's a lot of room for communication. The, our our um, shared vocabulary is just it just expands by by the nature of them having been in um, you know my shoes so brilliantly and so often so our we just the, the relationship starts at a broader place uh, now uh, orange is the new black is, is kind of a rarity in that it's a show with a predominantly female cast and in the industry you don't often see as many great roles written for women as, as you often do for men. Uh, what's it like working on a show with such a strong, you know, predominant female point of view? Um, well, it feels amazing. And it feels... Um, my experience on this show is one um, of a lot of courage. I feel like for, for, for whatever reason the way all the elements have combined, and I don't, don't know if that's necessarily because it's based, because there are, are so many women involved, but um, it really fosters an environment where uh, I feel quite brave to take a lot of risks and to also be easy, to also let, to also not work too hard and to let the work kind of, um, role in a way that's really liberating um, and I, I think that you know I, I think that part of that comes from working with so many women and I and I also think that uh, th it's just incredibly empowering to be reading scripts every week where each of us each female is in the seat of her own narrative and um, her story is valid and every character no matter what their background is or where they've come from or where they're going, their voice is worth being heard. And that's um, made clear by virtue of the fact that her we're shooting it and we're telling that story, you know? We don't there doesn't have to be any pomp and circumstance around it. It's just in the doing, in the doing of making these stories of telling these stories, we're saying your story is valuable. Who you are is valuable. You don't need to be an addendum to a, a guy or whatever. You know, oftentimes is like a, a more um, a more obvious story structure or a story structure that we see more often in in media or in entertainment. Like, it, so there's just this sense of okay, who I am right now in this moment is totally valuable and the the story that I'm living in this moment is worth being told. Does that make sense? Yeah, I, I think it does. I mean, it, it is structured in that in that very interesting way, uh, uh, sort of reminiscent of Lost in a way, how each character, you know, it really is almost the lead character in their own story. You know, we see their lives before, we see their lives in prison, and it, it very much does have that, that feel of, of all those stories converging. Yeah, right, right. And that by, by giving space to all of them, um, it, it, it just emphasizes the fact that they're all valuable and that everyone is, everyone's story is, is valuable. Uh, we have a question in our chat room from Rika Jean who uh, says, I'm currently obsessed with Orange is the New Black. Uh, did, you expect this huge, did you expect this huge response from the, friend, from the fans? Well, you know, the fans are, of the show are amazing. And I have never, ever, I feel so surrounded by so much, um, just so much love and support from this show. I, it's really quite incredible. And I, I, I'm so, I'm so grateful for it. I'm humbled by it. I'm really, but it's incredible. Uh, 
But like I was saying, I personally, it resonated so deeply with me personally that it doesn't totally surprise me because I'm a human being too. It doesn't totally surprise me that all these other human beings are so enamored with the show because that's how I, that's how I experienced it as well. So, you know... Yeah, I mean, you can never expect it, but it also doesn't surprise me. So it's kind of both. Uh, you know, and you make the first season, and, and it all was released all at once in, uh, you know, last summer. So you, you don't necessarily know that it's going to catch on, even though it did feel like something special you were making. But uh, after you made that first season and it got the response that it did, uh, did it feel like a different experience going back when you shot the second season? Um... It's, there was certainly more attention around it. So, I mean, I don't think there's any way for it not to become a... Like, we were all... When we first started getting back into it, there was a sense of, like, being a little bit more self-conscious. Like, oh, my God. People are actually watching this. Because the first season we just made in a total vacuum that no nobody really knew what Netflix was, and nobody was really... I mean, in terms of original content, and it wasn't some... You know, and we were making this story sort of, we were like in a studio in Queens and just all of us kind of playing together. But, um, yeah, I mean, I think it was it was really exciting to feel like it was embraced so strongly. Um, yeah, but then once we actually get into it and we're actually doing it and it's a scene-by-scene scene thing, it doesn't feel different. I mean, the work is the work, and that's just what we're all there for. Uh, the series is based on uh, the memoir by Piper Kerman about her experience in prison. Uh, did you read it to prepare for the role? Yeah, yeah, I read it. I read it. I had I didn't read it before we started shooting, but I read it. Um, you know, bef no, I d I did. <laughs> I d I read it before we started shooting. Uh, and, and Piper Kerman is a consultant on the show. Do you work yeah. closely with her on developing the character? Um, not so much on developing the character. I, I mean, she, because by the Piper I play, Piper Chapman is very different than Piper Kerman. And, uh, or she's a fictional, Piper Chap, my character is a fictional character, and obviously Piper Kerman is a real woman, and we weren't making it, you know, a biopic or a bio streaming series about Piper Kerman. Um, but in terms of gathering information about prison life and, uh, you know, visiting prisons and getting involved with um, the Women's Prison Association, which has been really valuable to me. Uh, th that certainly has been Piper. Piper has led me to those things. Uh, in what ways would you say your character uh, and the real Piper Kerman, uh, what ways do they differ? Um, <laughs> well, I mean, I think that Piper Kerman is a is a bit more pragmatic than Piper Chapman. I don't think she would keep me. I, I mean, I think that she's Piper Chapman is. Um, I mean, I love her. She is trying so hard, and she is really searching out for the for her truth. And she doesn't even know that she's doing that all the time. But she's she's um she's really she's fighting, you know. And at the same time, she's sort of saddled with this upbringing and this way of viewing the world that prevents her from not always like being the most pragmatic or being the most having the, the you know the most amount of common sense or whatever. So, you know, I I don't know. I think that I think that Piper uh, Kerman, the real Piper. Um, Probably, probably is more pragmatic. She probably might not take her quite as long. So she she would probably keep to herself a little bit more. She, I mean, Piper, Piper's kind of Piper's taking her journey very external, and I don't. I think Piper Kerman is, you know, she's she's a smart cookie. Uh, being set in a in a prison, uh, the characters uh, exist in very close quarters, and you know there are a lot of group inter there's a lot of group interaction among the cast and different different characters. Does that create a lot of camaraderie among the actors on set? Um, absolutely. I mean, I don't know. I, I think that I think there are a couple of things that have created our cast. I've never experienced anything like our cast 
in my life so far, um, and I'm so grateful for it. I, uh, but yes, I think that the close quarters, I think having a shared experience, I think all of us kind of doing this together, um, and so most of us being in similar places when we started this, of really loving the work and really just being excited about telling a story that we we all believed in, um, with nothing else, like no, nothing else mattered. Um, that really bonding. It was, a, it was a very, you know, I guess bonding sort of thing. Uh, you know, it's, it's a it's a large ensemble cast and, and a lot of uh, distinct, memorable characters. Uh, but you know, we have a question in our chat room from Taylor Schilling Slays, uh, who wants to know uh, which character do you think is is underrated on the show? Is there anyone on the show who any character you think doesn't hasn't gotten the you know the attention or or, or the... they deserve? Mm -hmm. um, or not that maybe deserve, but yet as of yet, you know who I love? I love Chang. I love the character of Chang, and I would love to see her explored more. I think she's phenomenal. Lori Lori Chin is just a brilliant, a brilliant comedian and actress, and I think that character. I I can't get enough. Every time I see her on the screen, I'm like, more, more. Uh, Vosman. Uh, uh Vosman fan sixteen uh, wants to know uh, if there's an actress on the show that you say uh, you, you have a lot of great chemistry with, in addition to you know Laura Prepon. Um, I don't know. That's really like choosing. I don't know. That's like trying to choose a child. I feel like I. I feel like there. Every time I'm playing with someone, I feel like this is it. I want to follow you down to. I. I'll follow you anywhere. This is. This is. This is it. Um. So it's and that's such a pleasure that it there there's that feeling gets ignited uh, through so many of my castmates. Are there any uh, you know actors on the show? It's such a you know big ensemble cast. Everyone has their own stories. And you know anyone in the cast who Piper hasn't had a chance to interact with as much yet, who you'd like to do more scenes with? Um, man. I think there are a lot of people she hasn't really interacted that much with yet. I mean, Piper hasn't spent a lot of time with the Latinas yet. Uh, she hasn't. I, there, there's a lot. There's actually a lot of people that Piper hasn't spent a lot of time with. Piper, I feel like Piper's just now really finding her feet in the prison community. Well, that's not true. In the newspaper, the newspaper she did. I don't know. I don't know. She maybe she has, but there, there's, there's room for, in the in the newspaper. I mean, she did get to spend time with the, uh, with um, Flaka and Dianara. Um, it's a good question. Uh, now, for Emmy consideration uh, for best comedy actress, you had to submit uh, a sample episode of your best work to to a panel of judges, uh, and you submitted the episode "The Chickening," where uh, Piper becomes fixated on on a chicken she sees in the prison yard. Uh, yeah. How did you settle on that episode? Oh my God. Well, I I don't know. That was not that was not particularly easy. And I have to say that I I because I am not I'm not necessarily like I don't know. It's hard for me to judge my own work. So I left I left that in the hands of other people who maybe were more objective than I I could be. So that's where that's the, that's how the chickening came into came into the being. Uh, my uh, mm -hmm. uh, the, the show is uh, the show isn't easy to categorize. You know, you were nominated for drama at the Golden Globes, and now it's up for comedy at the Emmys, and it definitely has elements of both. Uh, while you're filming it, does it feel like the show is more one or the other, or or do you not really think about that distinction? Um, I don't think about it when we're shooting, but it's. I have to say, it doesn't feel like one or the other. It it doesn't feel like. There are moments when it feels very much like we're shooting a comedy, and there are moments where, you know, it feels like the the opposite of whatever a comedy is. So I don't know, but I do think stuff that feels the most authentic to me lives in the gray area. You know that that there there's a flip side to every experience, and you know, in the midst. Tragedy is the the most absurd slapstick humor, and um, vice versa. So, 
I, I mean, that's what I think is so genius about the balance that's struck in this show that is totally the writer's. Uh, Megan P. in our chat room wants to know, uh, if you won the Emmy, uh, how would you celebrate? Um, I would probably um, uh, dance with my cast somewhere. I don't know what I would do. I, I, I don't know. I would be really happy. I would, I don't know. I don't know. That remains to be seen. <laughs> be exciting. Uh, another chatter, uh, uh, O-I-T-N-B Vosman uh, wants to know, uh, Taylor, do you support uh, Team Larry or Team Alex? Oof. I support wherever the writers are taking Piper. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. I think Piper doesn't know the answer to that question, you know what I mean? So it's hard for me to know either. Uh, we have another uh, user in our chat room, Gay for Schilling, uh, what, who wants to know, uh, what has been one of your favorite scenes to shoot on the show and why? Um, <laughs> gay for Chapman. Well, um, <laughs> my favorite scene, I think probably, hi, I think probably my favorite scene is, Gosh, there have been some just like group scenes that have been so fun to shoot just because everybody is, it's so fun to have everybody together. So, um, I don't know, there have just been some scenes in the cafeteria that have been really fun to shoot. And um, there have been some scenes this year which I can't, I guess, talk about. It's funny, it's hard for me to think back to the last two seasons because my head is so much in the season that we're shooting now. So I can think of scenes from this season that are fun, but... Um, yeah, I would just say, you know, anytime a bunch of us are together, they're usually pretty fun. That said, what is the most attractive to me about this character and what has been the most fun is the uh, the range of scenes I've been able to shoot, that there are so many different parts of her that I get to explore. Um, yeah, that's pretty fun. Uh, well, I, I want to wish you the uh, the best of luck at at the Emmys and with the you know, the upcoming third season and you know the second season is uh, available to stream right now uh, and continued success for the show. Thank you so much. It was really it was a pleasure chatting with you. It was a pleasure chatting with you. <laughs> Have a great day. You too. Bye.